Kevin the Vet, one half of a whole, sitting here right now with my best homie out there holding it down on the West Coast. This is Rough House TV. We're about to get into some serious motherfucking business. So y'all stay tuned, man, because we got a heavy hitter for you today. But before we get into this, uh, if you guys are not subscribed to this channel, by all means, man, please go down there and slam that subscribe button. Uh, right next to the subscribe button is the bell. If you hit that bell, you get notifications and you'll get firsthand notif notified firsthand when we drop hot ass flaring content like we about to do right now. So having said all that, let's go ahead and jump off into this. We're going to slam it out there on the West Coast with my boy DG, otherwise known as Dave Goyce. What's up, partner? What's up, guys? Excited about this, man. We got Marty the Moth Martinez, Marty Koskis. Now, Marty, you're the very first guest that we've had on two times, so congratulations. That's twice the fun, so thanks for having me on twice. One of these days, I'm hoping maybe I'll come back in a year so you'll get my last name right since we've been friends for years. One of these days, I'm hoping. I don't know who the hell or fuck Koskis is. But hey, it's we'll it's back. the accent. It's the accent. I get a little wild on the accent, man. I can't even say I can't even say car right, okay? The New Jersey so, guy trying to say a Mexican name. <laughs> talking about that, now our other guest is the killer himself, the most intense man I've ever met. He's so intelligent. Kevin Big Cross. Big time. Good afternoon. <laughs> that's, hey, that's, that says it all right there. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Man of little words, but oof. Now, Kevin, my question to you is, how long have you known Marty, and do you say his last name correct? His name is Martin Casaus. No, oh, boom. Here. There we go. <laughs> See, that's someone who walks down Mexico streets with you, like, stupidly, but that's yeah. how you May have oh. said another story. Uh, known Marty for, uh, well, it has to be four years because I think, uh, I met Marty right when I started, uh, wrestling and, uh, it's, it's been a, just over four years now. Okay. Now I, I was really hoping you were going to do me a solid and like fucking butcher that man. Us from being from the East coast. Now you just made New Yorkers look a lot smarter than Bostonians. <laughs> Listen, by the end of this, we can turn that around real fast. Don't worry. The more I talk, the more. I will unravel, so we'll see what happens. There's a reason okay. this man is a man of little words. Now, the last interview that we did, you guys can go and check that out. We had Marty here, and Kevin was completely oblivious to wrestling. Kevin, did you learn a lot from that interview with Marty? Actually, actually, actually I did, but but I, I in no disrespect to Martin Cas Cas Casaus. Is that how you say it? Casaus? I'm yeah, there you go. Hey, don't worry about that, man, because David fucks my last name up. He calls me the black or the blick or something, and it's it's no big deal. Uh but after after watching, and I even asked Martin a couple times, you know, does this, you know, is it fake? Or we I've been raised to think that it was just acting, but after watching Kevin Killer and watching his Instagram, that shit is real, man. I, like I'm so 100 percent that that man does not fuck around and he brings the pain. So I'm I'm a true believer now. <laughs> like I'm a true fucking believer. Excellent. The whole the whole promise is I want to get both of them in the ring together. I'm really kind of disappointed, you know, being friends with them and I love going to watch wrestling on my spare time. I'll go to independent shows all the time. I got to see them go against each other. And my thing is, I've never, I've never even been to a live show. So the next time we come out to LA, Kev, I'm oh, gonna have to. Going. But, but here, here, here's my question for Kevin. I've already talked to Martin, and I got some, I got some insight on him. So for Kevin, I noticed that you know there is a lot of you. You have a very uh, high level of intensity, and I understand the statement that you made. You, uh, one of your quotes is, "Be the nicest guy in the room," but. On the other hand, kill him if you have to, so to speak. Um, where where does that where does that generate? Like what where where does that come from? What causes Kevin to be that to transform from this nice guy uh, to that more hardcore intense individual in the ring? Is it just the the fact that you're in that that uh, arena, or is it something more to that? It's a combination of things, but I think that. Uh... If I had to, I guess, retro analyze it would probably be just from how I've grown up, where I grew up, and just the circumstances and situations that I've either put myself into in life 
or uh, life is thrown at me. And um, kid, uh, well, we'll go deep. I mean, fuck it. I was a kid who grew up on religion, and uh, at a certain point in my life, that wasn't enough. I needed philosophy, and uh, I needed practical philosophy. I needed something that would reflect what was going on around me in my life, in my circumstances. And uh, the combination of those things really made me uh, have to observe things in the light of, you know, if you can't adapt, then you can't survive. And one thing to adapt and survive physically, but mentally and spiritually is a whole other story. And I think just the way I perceive life in general has really bled into me performing as a character in front of people and being able to transition. You know, you could, you flip that switch and, you know, you focus on the task at hand, so to speak. Kevin, let, let me, let, let me ask you this. And, and David, you guys just give me, just give me this, man. Cause he's, I, I got, I got this little feeling here. And, no. no, serious business. Kevin, what's your, what is your connection to the military? If any. Uh, okay. So my, my, one of my grandfathers on my mother's side was uh, armed forces. He was a uh, army. I knew and it. Grandfather on my, on my father's side, he was air force. Okay, so that's where that that's where that that sort of um, discipline, that level of discipline that you have mentally. I can see it. In, I can see it. One, I can feel it when you talk, but I can see it in your facial expressions, how you express yourself, how you come across. Uh, not everybody has that, and usually those that have that some sort of a parent or something of that nature that had some type of military uh, connection or served, they often are reared in that sort of left, right, left, uh, squared off type. Uh, mentality so that's where that that comes from so and those guys those of you that are watching this and you do not understand the lane in which we're going right now with this guy being as intense please and i'm gonna david will probably put his information on the screen you have got to see this guy's instagram page and the videos that uh he's put on there and, and has edited it gives a whole new light uh to wrestling as far as people that like, like me that don't know anything about it uh, he is, he goes, he really goes for his craft and that is very, uh, applaudable. So Kevin, this, the stuff you've seen, uh, just snippets. I'm going to put, make sure I put Kevin's YouTube link and Madi's all, everybody's information will be on the bottom, but go, when you get the time today, go to Kevin's YouTube channel that with the little snippets you see, right. blown up. You, you're going to be like, Phew. okay, so, so we'll check that out. But so here's my, here's my next question. Martin, can you kick Kevin's ass? Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get. I'm trying care. to get this. I'm trying to get roughed up around here, man. So I want you. I want. Matter of fact, what I want to see happen is I want to. I want Martin to start throwing shade on Kevin, and Kevin, I want you to get into that whatever that character mode is, and 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 cyberly kick Martin's ass right now. Like, do some damage. Promo time. Promo, <laughs> baby. Let's go. Time. Well, see, here's the fun thing is Kevin is the dude that goes with me and does the stupidest things that I could possibly think of with me. So we're on the AAA shows together in Mexico. Um, we're told specifically, hey, guys, dangerous part of town. Be careful if we're like, you're going to go get something to eat. So I'm like, Kevin, let's go walk around the streets and see what happens. He's like, shit, all right, cool, let's do this. <laughs> so we packed on. He's got these two giant white guys walking down the streets of Mexico. So he's my boy that I would love to kick in the face just because I've never gotten to do it in front of people. I don't even know if I've done it just for fun, but it sounds really fun. I really want to kick you in the face. It'd be a blast. <clears throat> Listen, uh, I'm all up for that as long as nobody gives you a lunchbox and a fork, okay? Don't give Marty any fucking <laughs> ball or anything like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the John Underground season three. Uh, or two, actually. Camo, lunchbox, fork, I'm out. Fuck that. I may or may not have stabbed somebody with a fork on the time. Yeah. If those, things are not, if those things are not in the element, then I'm all up. I'm up. Now, David, you get, to, you get to watch these guys all the time, right? On the, on the all the time. It's completely different. When I'm in the stands being security, you don't know exactly what part of the story – you're actually watching until you go home and then they air Lucha on TV and then you see the story entwine. So to me, every single match that goes on in Lucha Underground, it's not like a low card, a mid card and top card. It, to me, every single match is right here at the top card. You don't know which one's going to be the main event. Right. And the former, 
they blow each other out of the way. It's a competition to them. So you two have never actually had a match in the ring together, is this correct? No, that's correct. We got it several countries together. We've got been in the uh, locker room in many a state, but never actually in the square circle together. Wow. So, um, Kevin, I also see that you – do you have MMA uh, background as well? I do. I grew up in a, in a combat sports uh, family where people were involved with any sport with combat, really. Um, so I grew up catch wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, and then I guess in my teenage years, I uh, – you know, every, every kid wanted to be fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme. So nobody in my family <laughs> – I've heard that name forever. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, everything on TV is, you know, spinning kicks and high kicks and people flying through windows. So I was like, well, that looks like karate. I'll go to a karate school. And I started my own exploration of the martial arts and trying to get into the fancy stuff. But yeah, I, I have a background in it. I fought, I fought bare knuckle, actually, which I'm not advocating to anybody because now in retrospect, that was really fucking stupid. But I fought bare knuckle between the ages of like 18 to 21. And uh, I did really well. I, I won a, a welterweight title. I was dropping down to 174. And I'm 6'3". So I was sitting behind my reach, um, and that worked very well for me. And then uh, there was an open weight competition. I jumped in at a 205. I just didn't want to cut the weight. And I won that. But, yeah, that was a long time ago. Martin, uh, you, sir, MMA background. I think we, got, we kind of somewhat touched on this a little bit in our first uh, talk with you. Uh, is that, does his, his same specs match up with yours? Uh, his is far more intense. Mine is more on the wrestling side of things and boxing. Um, I never really went into the MMA realm, uh, but I've trained in both, uh, just not as intensely as Kevin. I've seen Kevin train. Kevin is, and I meet a lot of crazy people. Kevin is actually one of the most intense, if not the most intense person I know. I second that. But he's a big teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Now, earlier, Kevin, you, you mentioned um, about your light switch getting turned on. Now, does that go for both of you, your characters and your persona? How much of that is your real-life personality? And do you feel like your best character is just your attitude turned up a notch? Uh, well, I would say my character that I portray is uh, – yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't really create that character out of something that I thought would be really cool. I created that character out of the necessity when I first started um, as, you know, assessing the roster in Vegas. And they wanted me to work heel, villain, for anyone who's unfamiliar with that terminology. They wanted me to be a villain. Well, I'm not going to be a fucking uh, a villain that's, you know, a side villain. I want to be the main villain. Whether they're giving me the main role to be the main villain or not, I'm going to be the worst fucking human being anybody has ever seen in their life. And uh, that, that's, that's my responsibility, my accountability. You know, if a writer tells me I need to be the bad guy, then I need to be as bad as possible. I don't want to be the cool fucking bad guy. Here. Anyways, long story short, that character was created out of necessity. So I would say that that is probably maybe 1% of myself really goes into that character. The rest of it is completely fictional because I don't really, you know, take all the worst traits of human beings I possibly could and roll them into this character. And then, over time, over the last four years, it's it's evolved and adapted and changed to meet the requirements of whatever show I'm on. But that's kind of how I came about developing that that person, if you want to call him that. Martin, what about you, Marty? Did you take like like a crazy aspect of your personality and turn that up a notch to make the moth? Uh, yeah. What would I do if I get stupid drunk? Is basically the way I think about it. Um, Chris Joseph of Lucha Underground says that he writes the characters for the people that he gives them to. So I don't know if he means that I'm a stalker, terrorist, take kidnapping girls and torturing kind of guy. If that's what you guys see out of this, let me know. <laughs> but I don't think I'd do that in my personal life that I know of. But I got a big basement, so the option's always open. Um, but no, actually, the craziness is actually more the goofy and the facials and stuff that's all me just turned up it's just some of the deeds like i don't go around forking people in my regular life um but i i would gladly do it again it was really fun <laughs> um but i've done a lot of uh just like in my acting classes i took a lot of acting put it towards this character and i've done a lot of serial killer research as far as ted bundy 
Gacy, all these people just what made them twist into thinking these acts are normal. And so I've done a lot of serial killer research. So and taking that and put it in there. And so far it's worked out so well. So here, here's, here's my thing. I got a two part, I guess it's just two stage question. One for Martin, one for Kevin, but um, Martin um, on the same topic, have you found that it's hard at times to probably pull your character, like stop the character and become you? Do you bring this? Do you notice that it leaks over into your personal life? Are you sometimes still in character when you're like not in the ring? Do you know, do you, have you ever noticed that it's hard to get out? Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily hard. It's just, it's a part of me. So, um, and because people know me from the show and it's my usual way of acting, except without the stabbing and it, it's at level eight instead of level 12. Well, and, and let me, let me, let me explain the reason behind my question, because in my, in our world where me and David usually reside, most of all, at least for me, there was a gentleman, I don't know if you know uh, who Rich Piana was or if you've heard. Okay. So, Rich Piano was actually a character. And, and the reason why I ask is because a lot of guys in, in, in the bodybuilding or fitness community, they were deeply afflicted by what happened to him uh, and his death. And a lot of them could not understand how he could not, he, how he let his character, this, the big Rich Piano, how he let that take over his entire life. And the character actually killed him uh, and drove him to do things. So that's why I'm asking, have you noticed that it is hard for you to kind of step out of character and become Martin on a regular basis, or do you see that they, they kind of conflict with each other? Um, I've seen in in my regular life it's been useful when I like to fuck with people. Um, I'll be staring at them, and then I'll just stare at them until they turn around and notice that I'm staring at them. And I'll just stare at them like light of them off. And it's just fun to fuck with people. But other than that, it's been pretty easy. It's been an easy switch on or off because it's just me just without the killer stuff right so no, okay. i just imagined the other kevin just staring at somebody and then oh, somebody I, turning around and having him looking at you hey listen i i'm I, I feel you on that david and i'm not a punk bitch but i won't even look down on my screen to see if kevin's looking at me right now because i don't even want to see that stare because i'm thinking this man can reach through this screen and choke the shit out of me right now i've seen it <laughs> Now, Kevin Cross, how about you? How about your personality? Do you feel like your character gets turned up? But probably not if you only took 1% in. Yeah, zero. I have zero problems connecting or disconnecting to it. Um, I have a process that I go through to connect into it. Um, a lot of people backstage, and Marty's probably seen this before too, or maybe you heard people talk about it. People think that I look really, really, really uh, fucking tense or or even nervous or i don't know people people don't know what's going on with me about an hour to two hours before i'm about to hit the curtain and i just i quiet myself i quiet my mind and i get really fucking still and people think that i'm tense about the match or tense about whatever i'm not they just don't understand that that's just the process that i go into i get real fucking quiet and um you know i get very still i'll just sit down somewhere and you won't even know i'm in the room uh, so but getting out of that is literally once i'm through the curtain that's it it's done that's 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 all there is to it because i'm so mentally exhausted by that point of giving more than 110 percent every time i go out there that i've there's not a molecule in my body that can preserve that character past <laughs> getting through the fucking curtain so, kevin did, did you uh did did you model yourself like growing up i'm not sure exactly how long you actually were wanting to be a part of this industry, but did you model yourself somewhat after anybody in the so-called the big leagues of wrestling? I've, I've had a lot of influences um, and I, I invite them into what I'm doing without ripping them off. Uh, I give a lot of nods in my work and a lot of my presentation to people. Uh, one, one of them is Brian Pillman. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember him from back in the day. Uh, flying Brian Pillman, loose cannon. He played on Cincinnati Bengals, actually, uh, in pro football. But uh, yeah, basically, uh, I've had I've had a ton of people. Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar. I was. Uh, I, I, I'm man, I won't even drop their names because I have any idea who they are. But right. another guy, Gary Albright, who I believe was uh, he was an amateur in the United States. I know he won a bunch of state championships. Doctor Death, Steve Williams. I've had tons of people. But uh, I've really, really tried to make sure that my presentation 
is as original as possible. You'll just right. if you're a fan of the entertainment industry or the uh, sports entertainment or pro wrestling, everyone will refer to it. You'll see it. That um that little bit that you gave uh, maybe about four or five minutes ago about how you you uh, mentally just you're really calm still, and then once you get past that curtain, you cut off. I think David, honestly, man, I, that that is a really good take for anybody that's watching, especially young guys that are watching or older in, in general, anybody um, to take that um, what he just said and try to apply that to your regular life, especially in very high tense and stressful situations like that is a very good mantra to think about uh, right before you get ready to just try to stay calm and keep, you know, that that level ahead. That is that. I mean, I take a lot out of that. So that was really good to hear that. So, uh, Martin, um, we're not trying to cut you out. I know that, that you um, are aspiring for the, the big screen, so to speak. But Kevin, uh, and I can say this because I, I just see this, I guess, maybe because I'm a newbie to the game, but I see this uh, rock, the rock kind of persona. Like I see that real superstar level. Uh, I don't know if you are, but I can see WWE or big, whatever this W Super Slam, these, the guys that travel, you know, the, where the rock came from and all those guys. Uh, do you have any aspirations of being up there? I mean, I haven't even seen you wrestle, but I just saw your your Instagram. But the level in which you play, you're not playing on the same level as everybody else. Do you have any aspirations of being WWE? Thank you. For, uh, first of all, I really appreciate that. Um, I get a lot. It's funny. Like, a, it's almost Groundhog Day, but in a good way. I verbatim will, will hear what you just said all the time. And um, my response is generally the same. I, I would be interested in working with World Wrestling Entertainment when the time is right. Um, and then as for, you know, working on the big screen of movies and such, absolutely, 100%. And, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I love being able to talk to people who are, who are not in the business or don't watch the business because I know that the residual pro wrestling audience is going to enjoy what I'm doing. I just know it because I enjoy what I'm doing. And I know what they like, and I'm going to give them what they like. But my main target audience is always been since I started people who don't watch wrestling. I want to show people who don't watch wrestling something that they may actually like to start watching wrestling. And then it's up to the industry at that point to, to keep them, I guess, so to speak. But I have always tried to target people who are checked out of wrestling or people who used to watch wrestling and don't watch it anymore. And um, I try to take those elements, all of those things that you said, and try to put them into that, uh, that larger than life, uh, cinematic, uh, you know, star power, uh, something the putt out there that that is magnetic, and I, I don't even know how to even drop a blueprint as to how I would do it. It's just an intuitive feeling that I have. You know, I just kind of go over it and I say to myself, "This is something that people would like, and this is how it needs to be executed and how it needs to be done." And I just put it out there, and the universe sends it back. I guess. Martin, do you and Kevin ever kind of swap ideas as far as acting? Since I know that you're big into that, you've done some film before. Do you help this guy out with his? Not that he needs help acting. Obviously, you can pull a character. Everybody's a character in life. But uh, to go to the level in which you guys are doing, do you guys kind of cross uh, ideas and, you know, train together as far as the, the acting is concerned? Um, as far as acting, we throw around a lot of ideas. Uh, Kevin really helps me a lot with some ideas for wrestling. Um, and as far as the acting, we haven't really talked too much about, but we did – help each other out and get each other in that last Adam Sandler movie. We're both actually, because of our knowing of each other, we actually got each other on the Adam Sandler movie. Um, and that's out on Netflix right now. So we both got to wrestle Terry Crews there. So we help each other out with opportunities come. But a lot of Kevin's ideas are more about the act, or not the, the wrestling scene. And hey, man, this is what I'm seeing that you could probably do because I could always go more intense. And who better to go more intense than the most intense guy that I know? Right. So, that's why I've been, been using Kevin for is just getting some ideas as far as that. And just watching my, I've been, he doesn't know this, but I, I watch him sometimes on how he acts because, like you said, he's intimidating, but he didn't do anything to you. To be intimidating, you have he has this aura around. Him. So one, I quietly peek. Okay, he's not interacting with people two hours before his matches. It's kind of creeping people out, kind of freaking them out a little bit. Why is that freaking people out? So how can I take that into acting and make you creeped out if I want to make you creeped out? 
Here's a question. Since since Kevin gets the silent, and I've seen it myself, lifting weights, waiting for the show to start. Kevin gets really quiet, and he'll be in the ring by himself. And you see him shadow box, and he's just by himself. There's no, there's not any wrestlers around him or nothing. You're the complete different. You're very engaging with everybody, from security to fans to the people in the catering, the whole nine. You're a people person. Do you think? Between you two, is there a kind of different correlation, like reputation-wise? Because I know politics play such a big part in wrestling. Do you think you you get over more than say Kevin would because he's quieter? Mm, I wouldn't say I get over anymore. I just um, I've been told that I'm the mayor, and Kevin knows what that is. Uh, yes. but I like interacting with people, and. It blows my mind that a few people live in the same state. You guys aren't chilling with each other and throwing around ideas together, working together, advertising each other. It blows my fucking mind. I wish I had people here in Utah that like, just bounce ideas off of and can we act? Can we do this? Make each other better. Um, but they don't. So he calls, I became called the mayor because I'm bouncing around talking to everybody. Um, but when it's showtime, I have to beat the living shit out of myself. That's how I get ready. I, I can get ready and, five minutes but it just involves me punching myself in the face literally um a lot um but i wouldn't say i get over more than him at all it's just i probably am more relatable to some people who probably don't know kevin as much because i know kevin i know how he works but if you don't know it could be just that guy thinking he's too cool or too this he can get a reputation of i'm he's shy or he's this, or he doesn't like me, or something like that, because he doesn't talk to people and let people know how he actually is. He's actually a nice guy. Okay, be That's before we wrap guy. before we wrap this up, the reason I ask you that question is, um, unless you were there at season at season three tapings, Kevin Cross was there wrestling, and he did not do any. They did not put him on the TV, which surprised the shit out of me. Just coming back and watching the show, there was no Kevin. The very Lucha Underground last uh, taping, I'm texting him, where the fuck have you been? Like, why didn't they put you on? That's why I asked, do you think it's because he's quieter? Or they just didn't really know what to do with a good talent like that? Uh, in my mind, is they just don't, didn't know quite what to do. They figured some things out on character-wise, because I wrestled three, four matches, dark matches, before the TV cameras go on, before they ever figured out what the heck to do with me. I was a magician. I was myself. I was, oh, geez, what was the other one? Some other retarded thing, but I was, a, the magician one was the craziest. Um, but I tried a whole bunch of other things before I ever got to become, become the moth. So I think that was actually mostly just them trying to figure out where is he going to fit the best? Because obviously he's a composing character. So let's put him in the right spot, put him in the right spot. Kevin, do you, do you take it like that? Like, how, what was your take on that? Because I don't think I've ever asked you that. Well, <laughs> um, there have been several ideas from the beginning as to how I was going to be utilized in the program. And every new idea that was pitched following after the last one they had submitted to me was even better. And uh, I have kept it to myself uh, because that's part of our business. And, the, you, know, our, you know, Lucha is all about surprises. The very last conversation that we had about something that was going to be done with me was very, very big and very, very significant. And one thing that is really tremendous about this company is that they want to make sure that every single talent is over with that audience, and that every single person gets their episode or their time uh, to show their value as a commodity to the narrative. And let's just say that the concept that they had for me was, was going to be all eclipsing. <laughs> so there was a lot of time that, you know, needed to be taken into consideration. I had to take a back seat and um, it's not the first time in life. It won't be the last. And I just dealt with it like a grown ass man. And I will continue to do so until I get my shot. And I know that I will. And just to let everybody know, Kevin, how long have you been wrestling for? Four years. The first month I started training, I was wrestling in front of people. That just blows me away. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Dave. You've only done this for four years? 
Yeah. Dude. The, the, I guess I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just ignorant to it, but I thought I, I could have swore he was in maybe at least ten. And, and I did it's just I guess it's just the way you you, you get seasoned. You know, if somebody and, and guys, anybody that's watching this, always do shit that you love to do. Don't just do things to do it. But if you find something and you find a craft that you like, man, just if you if you're in that lane, just. Go for that shit 100% because this is what you get. I thought just by hearing you talk and watch you and seeing your mannerisms and all this other stuff and looking at your content on social media, you are a, a well-seasoned veteran. Like, this is not a four-year guy that's been wrestling. It's not. It absolutely can I, I would not have believed that had you somebody told me that. You see that reaction you just gave? That's why I asked Kevin that question because I knew how long he's wrestled, but I know you didn't. Yeah, I had no clue. I thought this was this guy's been here for ten, at least ten years, at least. Kevin has so, been one of those guys that lived like a fifty-year-old ex- life as far as experience, but he's young as shit. So it blows my mind if you ever get a chance to sit and talk with him about what he's actually done in life, about when he was in Japan and when he's in these different countries. Ah. Doing- we might have to get that again. We might have to get that again, man. How old are you, Kevin? Seriously. 32. God damn. Dude, I got him by 12. How, yeah, I got him by 12 years. That's because you're old as fuck, man. Get the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to ask one question to each of you. Same question. Uh, Martin, starts with you. Red pill, blue pill. Red pill, you can go back to the age that you were 10 and start all over. Blue pill, you can advance to age 50 and have $10 million in the bank. Which would you pick? Fuck that. Make me 10 years old again. That'd be fantastic. I'm 10 years old right now mentally anyway, so I might as well put myself body-wise there. And as long as I know exactly what I know now, I'll be set. You make me 10. Kevin, same question to you, sir. Make me 10 years old. I've never been shy of hard work. I'll work as hard as I can for as long as I can. I would love to do it all over again. Uh, and, and you get the bonus question that we gave Martin last week. Do you white front or white back? <laughs> white back. <laughs> I don't know why. FYI, I just wanted to tell you guys this. Might as well do it now. I was asked by my mother, who never gets online. She doesn't know how to do anything. But she's just getting to where she can check Facebook, and every once in a while she'll throw a comment on. But today she's like, I didn't know you white from the back. I <laughs> <laughs> so my mom watched this interview nice david uh i have to say thank you uh and you guys may not understand this but david thank you from the bottom of my heart for actually um enticing me to do this because and, and he can tell you straight up man when we first talked about this i'm like dude i don't know shit about lucha or wrestling only thing i remember is that king kamala guy and Randy Roddy Roddy Piper, that's all I know about wrestling. I don't know shit else. So why are we doing this? But to have uh, been exposed uh, to your world, which a lot of you guys that are closed-minded to a lot of things, this is a life lesson. And I try to take life lessons out of everything. Uh, if there's something that you do not know, do not continue to practice cognitive dissonance. Get involved. Open your eyes up. Open your, your mind up and try to receive Uh, things from other people because there's a lot that you don't know that would actually enhance your characteristic and your mentality so david uh you my best homie on the planet man i have to say thank you for this because uh Uh, no the pleasure is all mine next time next time you come to la we're definitely going to go hit some indie shows hopefully kevin is still wrestling at maverick or Marty's over here doing a a guest signing or something but we'll definitely go because i want you to experience it firsthand then you're going to see why i'm so passionate and why I love it so much. Yeah, and we, we'll have to, so we'll have to set that date up. And, and you know, that right, this right here is a prime example of what good man love is. And I love you, David. I really oh. love you, dude. You my homie. <laughs> 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 hey, man, from the bottom of my heart, man, thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Martin, again for your time, man. I know you guys are in a, in a big business, man. You got a lot of shit going on, and wasting time is not a part of it. So thank you for spending quality time with us and giving us uh, and the fans uh, what they deserve. Please believe, man, we're going to do this again. Uh, I know we're going to have a lot of new shit for uh, coming up in the future with Martin, and I know there's a big horizon of shit coming on uh, for for uh, Kevin. I can just feel it. Uh, hopefully, um, it, it'll open me up. And maybe I'll watch, turn on the TV and watch some Lucha Underground or something like that. So, David, you got any last words, homie? 
Yeah, let's uh before we close this out, Kevin and Marty, can you do me the favor and just fucking promo the hell out of you each other right now like you guys are going to have a match. Do it in 1 minute and then Kevin can cut that video and I can promote the shit on Instagram and let's get you guys here in LA. Ready? I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. Go. Go ahead, Marty. I'll take it home. You fuck. Go ahead. Oh, pretty girl doesn't want to start first, huh? <laughs> That's cute. Okay, hey, listen. I'll start first. Now you do the challenge out. Listen. <laughs> 27th Las Vegas, Future Stars of Wrestling. Any fucking time, any place, anywhere, any date, any city in the fucking world, just show up, sign the waiver twice. I will dive bomb you on your fucking head in front of your friends and family. Because, you know, Killer Cross is a fictional character and is pretty scary, right? But you know what's really scary? The guy in real life, Kevin. Because in real life, Kevin is a lot scarier than the fictional guy. He's indifferent to violence. He's indifferent to who he hurts. And he's indifferent to how severe it can get. Now, I know you're not a man of fear. You're not an apprehensive person. And I like that because I don't want to chase my fucking victims. Just show up in Vegas and tuck your chin. Don't worry. You don't need to do any chasing, bitch, because I will not be running. I'm going to be in your face. And I was always told to make a mark to take the biggest fuck down. Go to the place you want to make the mark at and take the biggest one down. Well, you're the dumbass who does happen to be the biggest. So congratulations on being my new bitch. Oh, my. Woo! <laughs> that shit was hot. And guess what? If you're scared, go to church. <laughs> Out. <laughs> that was so hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's why you get a woman that'll drive for you. Hey, you don't go having a woman, would you? <laughs> Going to hell. You'll lose your virginity. How you doing, sir? Doing very good. All right, man. I watched some of your YouTube, your uh, Instagram um, posts, dude. You you're pretty intense. I like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like that. Understatement of the year. I'm telling you, <laughs> in real life, he's scary as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I have to be. Sorry, <laughs> Patty Bear. We got. I, you are recording this good. <laughs> Big scary teddy bear, about as strong as these guys. Yeah, look at that face. Fucking intimidating, isn't it? <laughs> Marty, before we start, man, take that vibrator off of the computer. Oh man, that's the good shit. 